Hi guys, welcome back to Trash It. Okay, so I've got my usual host, Yuri, with me on the show today. And as you can see, we've got Miss Sahara back on the show, okay? We did a video with Miss Sahara last year. If you haven't seen it, go back into our YouTube channel and have a look. We've got Miss Sahara back today and you guys have been saying you wanted more of her, okay? And we do listen and we brought her back today to discuss another very important topic, okay? Because whatever we record with Miss Sahara is about educating people out there, okay? We don't need no narrow-minded people. On no. The, if you know you're very narrow-minded and you cannot think outside the box, sorry, Exit. this might not be the video for you. Exit okay. the page. Exit, okay? So the topic we're going to be discussing with Miss Sahara today is the Black African Church and the LGBTQ community. Okay, so Miss Sahara, I mean, you you all know who Miss Sahara is. If you don't know her, check, go on her Instagram page, her Facebook page and check her out and get to know a lot more about Miss Sahara. Now, Miss Sahara, I'm going to ask you, okay, what, you, 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 were, you, you grew up in Nigeria, didn't you? Yeah? yeah, you grew up in Nigeria and you grew up in the eastern part of Nigeria, which is predominantly um, Catholics, right? No. I oh, grew okay. Up in the northern part of Nigeria, but oh, okay. not so, belt, uh, but more northern part because I grew up in Abuja. Oh, did you now? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So with that, did you grow up within a Christian family? Yes, but my family is mixed, so I have the privilege of Islam and Christianity. That's the reason why my mm -hmm. um, my experience when it comes to both popular religions in Nigeria is quite. Um, eye-opening to see what is happening in Nigeria at the moment. So yes, I grew up in the middle belt of Nigeria. Great. And th that, that even sits very well because then you can yeah. give us a taste of both religion, Islam and Christianity. Yes. So now yes. tell me, how did your early childhood, right? How did it shape, you know, who you are today with regards to, you know, you being a trans woman? How did your early childhood growing up amongst Christians and amongst Muslims, how did that shape you? Um, because, okay, for me, uh, growing up as a child, uh, my grandmama was religious, so I was, she always takes me to church. She used to go to this church, uh, Cherubin and Seraphim, okay. where they wear white gown and they were, apparently, this, I only learned this recently, I thought all Cherubin and Seraphim uh, branches all wear the red belt. Uh, um, but my, a few friends of mine on Instagram were saying that, no, actually different section or different branches of the, of the religion or the uh, section of that uh, style of Christianity have different colors of belt that they wear. Mm -hmm. So my grandmama's one was red. And I remember her taking us, she, she always took us to church. I had my first baptism there. They always wash us in this cold water. Um, <laughs> and there was, it was, it was amazing. I, mean, I felt really good because especially when I'm there, when they're uh, overcome by spiritual um, Holy Spirit and they start speaking in tongues and dancing mm -hmm. and all of that. And the music, the Yoruba music that we listened to, it was absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Uh, but the street that I grew up in, in my grandmama's house, because I did grow, my earliest childhood was with my grandmama because my mom had to go back to the uni. So I did spend a lot of time with my grandmama. So my life as a child was very somehow not uh, restrictive, by my grandmama because she loved me unconditionally and let me be myself but i was able to explore my femininity despite the fact that the religion and society were constantly frowning at me for being who i was and telling my grandmama not to do it that way why they, why is she letting me be, be this and be that you know as a grandchild they mm. just love you unconditionally and spoil you unconditionally and she was one of those people who did that for me? You know, she taught me how to cook. She let me dance with the girls, traditional dances that are only allowed for uh, the females. I was allowed to do it with the girls and to tie my wrapper up to my chest as well to dance with the girls. So I did feel, I did um, blend into society very well. Um, 
so when, when religion came in, as in like, you know, she took us to church, we learned everything in the church. We found out that religion was absolute. What we're taught in the church was what we must follow. If you question religion or question God, you're immoral. And they taught us all sorts of things like, you know, um, uh, you don't, you know, you, the morality based on what we're learned, what we're taught in Nigeria is based on what we're taught in the Bible or Quran. Um, and on the street, like I said before, there are Muslims there and there are Christians there. My auntie is a Muslim because she was married to a Muslim man. My cousins are Muslim. So it was something that was very well integrated. This was before we got into the radical form of religions. So before I get into that, I'll just let you, right. I'll okay. let you do the leading. So you mentioned a bit a while ago that um, that you, your grandmom allowed you to play with the other female children and you took part in the dance that would have been just for female female children. How yeah. did the parents of those other children, how did they see this? Did they feel comfortable with it? Yeah, okay, so let me give you, let, I'll give, let me just give you a contest because many people may not understand this. My grandpapa yeah. is married to lots of women. My grandmama was the first wife. So she was the matriarch of the family. Um, the, the other wives, their children, those are my uncles and nieces, were my step uncles and nieces. So they were the ones that was the kids that I grew up with, were basically my extended relatives who were about my age. So we grew up together. Of course, they frowned at it. And of course, they beat me up and tell me not to do this and do that. Go and play with the boys. Go and do this, go and do that. And my grandma would tell them to leave me alone, you know, because I'll be with her in the kitchen in the mud hot cooking. And mm -hmm. she would let me do things that most male children were not allowed to do that. But I was allowed, I, I was given the leeway because my grandma let me be myself. So of course, everybody, they were all angry. They were very happy about it because they thought it was wrong and it was immoral for her to be doing that. And at what age were you at this time? I was very really little. When my mom gave birth to me, she mm. gave birth to me. I didn't, I was, I didn't breastfeed. She okay. had to leave and go to school. I think she did her university, then she had to do her master's as well. And this was the turbulent period of her time where she was being abused by my sperm donor. I don't call him father because yeah. he doesn't deserve the title. Um, you know, she was sexually abused and beaten up. I witnessed all the fights and all of that. I remember it very well to mm -hmm. what she went through, the hell that she went through. Um, so that period she wanted to go to school, she, because she, one of the main thing that she agreed when they married her, to, because she wasn't in love with my father. She was married in her, an arranged marriage, okay. which was too young for him as well when they married her out. And she put her foot down and uh, my grandpapa said, if you're taking this girl, this girl child, you must make sure she go to school. And he didn't actually even bother. So my mom wanted to go to school badly. So she was going to school when she gave birth to me. And then uh, she was also struggling to find her own feet because she didn't, she wasn't happy with what was going on back there. So she, she had no choice but to leave me, leave me with my grandmama. So I was milk fed, milk fed uh, but um, I, that was, I think that's the reason why the bond between myself and my grandmama was so strong. I was still sleeping with my grandmama in the same bed before I left Nigeria. So that was, wow. how, that, that was how close we were. Wow, that's good. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I can imagine the relationship you would have with her because she practically brought you up, didn't she? Yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so given that Christianity, right? Is, supposed, is a religion that talks about love for all men, for everyone, regardless of your age, your sexuality, your religion, regardless of anything at all. It preaches about love, it talks about love. So what has been your experience with the Christian faith amongst the black community? Because I'm using the black community because I know that we can be very unaccepting of, yes. of, of a lot of things, okay? So what has been your experience within the yeah. black church, okay, since you came out as a trans woman from Nigeria and up until now, in, now that you're in the United Kingdom. Okay, so I'll give, you, I'll give you a bit of history with my experience with Christianity and my religion, my religious views. Um, growing up in Nigeria, obviously our orientation is to believe in God, God first, family second. Yeah. Um, I joined the church because I, I love music. I started my music in church, I was in the choir, um, and I enjoyed, <laughs> enjoyed meeting people. It was social. I remember going to family worship center. That was my main uh, church because I was a teenager at the time. And that was when 
my main um, uh, influence came from because it was a modern church. It was hip and it was, yeah. you know, it was, I don't know what Swag. the churches are like in Nigeria now. Yeah, but it was like super hip because the pastor is from my state at the time. And he was, he's pa unfortunately passed away now, but he was very yeah. much, um, he studied in America. His wife was very hip and all of that. So the church was very, the music style and everything was very Americanized. So I remember going to that church and joining the choir and then I joined the youth choir. My music, you know, I love the music and everything there. Uh, we write, I write music for the choir and we, wow. I was very much embedded in, in, in the choir. Okay. Um, so, but my experience there was the bullying from fellow girls who were studying there as with myself, studying the religion and, and practicing the religion with myself from calling me a disgrace to manhood because of my femininity, because I was unapologetically feminine. feminine. Uh, and then they talk about attacking homosexuality and the way they talk about people who are deviant, just because I am feminine, I curl my hair and I wear nail polish, the mm -hmm. shoes I wear are over-exaggerated, I put extra heel, you know, just, um, I don't know if you guys remember this, um, uh, just people that repair shoes on mm -hmm. their cobblers. the cobblers on yeah. the streets in, in Nigeria, so mm -hmm. call them, I'll tell them, put extra heel, you know, I ask them to put extra heel in my nail shoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You had that right from then. Girl, oh, yeah. I was. I don't know if you remember there was a in a time where there was this skirt in the 90s where there was a skirt that was raining in those days where there is a long, I don't maybe I'm older than you. Know, know, so say, is there was a long skirt? skirt that you have a slit, long slit Shabba. Shabba Shabba skirt. Skirt. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that now. Yes, yes. <laughs> you you look like you had one. Right. Yes, yes, yes. That was I had to gender bend my way out of it. What I was doing is I would get my trousers and tear it open and put three buttons on it. Even my school uniform shot, like I put slit on it and put three buttons on there. So you were dressing like a female then? You didn't care? Because I thought I was a woman and they wouldn't let me wear my skirt. Yeah. So I had to do something and they wouldn't just let me be myself. So I was, I was just gender bending my way out of it as much as I can. And unfortunately, being odd attracted a lot of harassment and bullying, name calling when I'm walking down the street coming from school people will be calling me names woman rapper to all sorts of things then they'll do they'll just call me names people beat me up and all of that fighting cows to doing it so anyway so my so going to church and looking that way and being such a gender bender and all of that did did ruffle some feathers um it did made make people feel uncomfortable which mm -hmm. I can understand because of their orientation, they're not exposed to people like me or what they know is what they see on Jerry Springer's, just like what my mom was saying when she found that I was a trans woman. So it was totally understandable. But um, after that experience, being in the churches in Nigeria, where I go out of the house, I get harassed, come back to the church where I thought I have solace mm. and I found solace in music and get preached that for being different. And by the way, molested in the church as well. That one is even another story. I won't even go too deep because there are people in the church who take advantage of people like myself. And that happened to me so many times. In fact, one of them even bought me a Bible. That was how, that, how, that was how bad it was. And I still have the Bible. Up to and now. these were by men in the church? By men in the church, yes. Wow, okay. So um, then I went, then I obviously put me in that same sex school. Oh, that one is another one with the priests. That one is another one with the school, even some of your celebrities in Nigeria, which I yeah. know very well, who were chatting rubbish about me on Twitter. And I said, if you guys don't shut your mouth, I'm going to out you because I knew all what you were doing in school. And <laughs> it's sad when they sit down there on their high horses and judge me for living my truth when they are behind closed doors doing the same things and what they did to them while they were in school, obviously they were children. That is the reason why I'm holding my lips because they were minors when they were, the were doing things with Who were molested? They were molested and they were molested in the name of night vigil in the, the priest quarters. That so is how they, that it was. So, so this was a male boarding school? Male boarding school. Catholic, <laughs> because you're Catholic school. Right, Catholic okay. male boarding school. Mm. Anyway, so... um. It was, it did conflict. I did have lots of conflict growing up because religion says one thing 
And here am I doing one other thing. And I didn't know the name for it. I don't know what the hell was wrong with me. I knew that there was something wrong with me because society says so. I was merely doing what my brain was telling me to do, which was living my truth, just being myself, expressing myself as much as I can. Uh, but society says no, and religion says vehemently no, because it's immoral and it's sick. Even up to the extent that some, they, they took my mom took me for prayers and uh, told them to, um, they had a, 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 a like a kind of a intervention when my mom found pictures of one of my friends dressed in lingerie, who is obviously male, if you see him, the way he presents himself, but very feminine, effeminate. My mom saw the pictures and took the pictures and found condoms in my bag and makeup bag in my bag. And she was very upset by that. And she hated all my friends in a way because all my friends were effeminate like myself. She hated them. And um, she but took these it to the- male friends? Yeah, they're, my, they're still male. Most of them are still male because okay. I see them online. We're not that close anymore. Just a few okay. are close to me now. A few remain uh, loyal. Majority of them have been married up by force. I think they are mostly gay, but their families don't like it. So they married them wives and all of them, forced them into stuff and things. Uh, oh. A few of them express wishing to be like me, but there is no way for them to do it because of the, their family. They are afraid of their family. And they're still in those marriages. Yes, there's one I know that is married and have kids. And it's so sad to watch because I know very well that this person is actually, they love dicks and they just enjoy men. Sorry mm. for being brutal yeah. but it's the truth you know they hanging out with women and it's so sad. this is why i always say to people when i see nigerian especially nigerian women attacking gay men and saying why are you coming out stay in the closet blah 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 i'm like excuse me you're the one that is going to suffer it and mm. your daughters and your sisters are the ones that are going to suffer it because these men our men our gay men nigerian gay men are hiding in the closet because of how society treats them and how women like you encourage them to hide behind closed doors who is going to suffer you are the one that is going to suffer because this when they marry this man they will never love you yeah. they will absolutely never love you so anyway so um that did somehow uh, you know, I, you know, I was exposed to this religious aspect of it, even from in the school because of my femininity with one of my other friends who was feminine, they called in novena on us to pray for us because apparently we are evil spirit that plays basketball at the basketball court and goes into the boys hostel slapping and molesting boys, which was in, which was the weirdest thing ever. My life was, <laughs> my life was hell. My defense mechanism, I remember saying to uh, my friend uh, over here, you know, Susan, I was saying to her, I said, because Susan and I only reminisce in um, Indian music, Indian movies yeah. that we grew up with in Abuja, because see, we're very, um, we had a lot of Islam and Muslim people around us. And we watch a lot of Indian movies with the Muslim people because uh, India, uh, um, Northerners, because of uh, Indian movies were very popular mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in their culture. And we used to watch movies like Negina, Negin, and all of those movies. And the songs that you used to... yeah. Yes, we keep sending the music, uh, sending the videos on YouTube to each other. And yeah. I, was, I was telling her the story of how I survived secondary school in Niger. I used to say that I'm one of the Neg don't come if you come near me, I'll start dancing like snake and start saying, oh. <laughs> oh <my laughs> <day. laughs> And the idiot gets just screaming and running away from yeah, me. He said, I'm possessed and they run away from me. That was how I was able to survive these bullies. Mm -hmm. uh, it was my defense mechanism when I was there. Wow. So obviously they said I was possessed by evil spirit and they would say all sorts of things and pray on me and do all sorts of things. So I did, I did have a huge conflict with my faith and my religion. I think I had my epiphany. My identity was in an epiphany. My identity has always been there because it's in my brain. Mm. But my, my, my realization of, wow, there is more beyond religion. Earth existed more than 1,200 years to, you know, my eyes were just open. I was like, what the hell is going on here? That was when I realized, when I moved to the UK, that was when I had my epiphany when it comes to religion. And I was like, wow, because I, I was, I am one guy, a Norwegian guy. And I was talking about how I love Jesus and all of that. And I was saying to him, you know, oh, you don't believe in God. And I was just attacking him. And he was like, I can't believe you actually believe a book that says you should not exist. A book that people used to bash you 
I will advise you to go and read it and do your research. And I found it, I was so angry when he called me out on it, but I thank him for saying that because when he said it, I was like, okay, let me go and do my research. And thank goodness we had the internet and we had Google. So I started doing my research, watching a lot of things that really did open my eyes to seeing a religion as what it was, politics, and how it came into existence and how the story that we read in the Bible today existed even way, way before it predates the, the existence of Jesus Christ and it predates the existence of the Bible. It has existed, the same story pattern has existed in different cultures and countries and society. Comes from ancient Greek to ancient Egypt, you know, and that was what really opened my eyes. And I was like, wow. Then I started questioning my, I started questioning it. So bringing it back to what you were saying, sorry, because I, I had to elaborate a bit. Yeah. Our modern evangelical Christianity and Wahhabism in Islam, it's imported, like I said before, from foreign countries. Wahhabism was imported from Saudi Arabia because they wanted to use that to dominate people in the name of politics, because it's politics at the end of the day. Wahhabism is politics, it's not faith. I wish, I've only said, even modern evangelism, it is, it's, it is politics. That is the Trumpism type of uh, Christianity. And it is politics because a true Christian, if you really believe in the Bible and believe in what Jesus preaches, you will say that, okay, maybe I should love my neighbor as I love myself, as the Bible have said. Then it means I should be agnostic, rather I should be Gnostic kind of Christianity where you believe in the being and believe that there is something or there is a God somewhere but I have to see proof of it. But then I should still believe that Jesus Christ existed and what he has done was positive and I want to be like him and look beyond the politics aspect of it or not using my religion to condemn other people. I'll focus on myself because Gnostic Christians were the original Christians in the beginning. They were very much, it was more between them and their God. It wasn't about fellowshipping and it wasn't about a rule or anything like that. It's about, it's about their belief system that they have between this, this being that is above them and they believe in facts as well, which is very, very important when it comes to religion. Uh, but they don't use it to bash other people. And this is the problem we have in Nigeria today because uh, uh, Christian and in the black community as well, when it comes to Christianity, when we're talking about Christians, even Islam, we often go to the extreme version of it, not the human version of it, where we have compassion and mm. kindness and, and be understanding of other people and love people, uh, regardless of where they come from or who they are, or who they love or their life histories. But we sit down there, there is no Christianity without judgment. We, as a Christian, there is no way you can, the way um, the modern Christianity, especially the Trumpism type of the, the new Americanized type of Christianity and the type of Christianity that I preach to Nigerians and the kind of Christianity that we use to bring our people and also use to educate our pastors cannot exist. It's, it's, it's very much, you can, there's no way you can, to um, practice that religion or practice that style of Christianity without judging people. And that's okay. the problem. Mr. Hara, can I ask you something? So yeah. would you say, because I, when you explain how you, you love the church and you enjoyed going and all of that, I could, I could, um, that resonated within me. I, I could relate to it because I love church and I love it because of the, the music. It's just a different atmosphere. And of, of, um, obviously the faith in God as well. So are you saying that you changed and you had that epiphany because of the hate that you were receiving from the Christian, from the black African Christian community? And were you not, if they had shown you more love, as you've just said, more kindness, would you have remained in the Christian faith? And that Norwegian guy, if he had said what you said, you would have been able to defend your Christian faith a lot more than you did then. Let's say if Christianity, I, don't get me wrong, I don't hate Christianity. Okay. I hate the political aspect of it and I hate Absolutely. the radical aspect of it. I hate when people use it to bash other people. That is what I hate. But 
I will fight for the right of people to practice their religion. I would always fight for the because I am a socialist and I am a, someone who is a humanist. And I believe that if someone, I believe in human rights and I will fight for you to exist and I'll fight for you to worship whatever God you want to worship. So mm. far you don't use it to bash me or bash other people. I will gladly support you. Where I have an issue is when people start using it to judge you and tell you you're not good enough. It becomes a classist thing by saying, oh, you can't sit with us. Keep it moving because you are not worthy, because you're evil and immoral. You can't sit with us. You know, who gives you the right to label some, something or someone evil? The Bible says thou shalt not judge. But still, Christians are judging. So, yes, um, if I hadn't, if, if, the Christ, if the church did not push me away, I would have still been in the church, I think, because I would have been very much still embedded in the church. If the church was more inclusive and more understanding and... Um, don't uh, tell me that I'm, I am immoral and telling me that who I am, that I'm going to the hottest part of hell, where that's mm -hmm. what I get all the time, that I'm going to the hottest part of hell, that I'm the devil incarnate and all of those nasty stuff. If the church was more inclusive and more understanding of my situation or more tolerant, let me use the word tolerant as much as it's not nice, but I would yeah. just say more tolerant of people like me and also LGBT people, by all means, the church won't be dwindling in the number of people that are going to the church today. Um, but also because the, the doctrine that, and also the history and the facts that came out, because when that guy said this and the way that I was treated, it made me go and start researching it even more. It, made, it opened my eyes because if I, if the, all of these things didn't happen to me, I would have opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is don't follow blindly. Don't have a blind faith. You need to open your eyes, study, and even if you still want to believe in it, believe in it, but go out there and do your research because we are an intelligent being and there is a lot wealth of information available at the, at the tip of our fingers. So why are we so reluctant to question the religion and question the, the, the whole things that we've been taught when we're kids? Would you, would you, would you agree? Sorry, Yuri, just one last thing. Would you agree that not all Christians fall into this category that you're talking about because they're christians that are very more um to for lack of a better word tolerant more accepting because they yes we know in the book of leviticus you know the bible talks about you know people same-sex yeah. marriages and all those sort of things but again another part of the bible talks about loving because as i said earlier christian and I believe Islam, okay, I don't know a lot about Islam, but from what you know, perhaps Islam, Christianity, it talks about involving everyone, loving everyone regardless. So would you, do you not believe that some Christians might not take the viewpoint of you're going to the hottest part of hell? Yes, there are lots of Christians. I have, my mom is a Christian and she accepts mm -hmm. me. Yeah. She loves me unconditionally, but not, it took her a long time. Despite much to the chagrin of her uh, what is it called religious Family, yeah. pe religious yeah. people around her and they often use uh, the bible as a prerequisite to accept people so they often whenever well, I remember when I first came out I was saying oh what did the bible say the bible says you know they're always bringing the bible into it even my younger sister as well saying that the pastor says the pastor says they say I don't want to hear what the pastor says I want to hear what you have to say about me as a person when they eventually said they weren't going to accept me I cut them off for one year and I was like, that's it. I'm not having this toxic. Your sisters? Yes, my mom and my sister. I cut them off for a year. Okay. Uh, and it, it went on with the blackmailing and, uh, you know, emotional blackmail. I won't go into it because it's quite a long, long story. Um, but eventually they came around because they found that I was living and doing my own thing. And I was living my life without them. And I was doing well because I specifically picked people around me. I picked my own family because one thing the LGBT people miss the most is family and having the right people around us. The ones who don't have the right people around them normally stray and do get into dangerous lifestyles. But in, in, in my case, I was lucky enough to, I have an Aussie mom, in fact, she's the one that got me this. And, you know, she stepped in when I was having my issue because I came out 2011 when I did that documentary that went live and 2012, it was aired in Australia and around the world. And a lot of people reached out to me because they mm -hmm. saw that I was complaining about my mom not accepting me because she said she would not mm -hmm. have someone like me in the family. Eventually my mom came around. 
she came around because she educated herself because she's an educated woman. She has a master's degree for goodness sake. She's an educated woman who encourages us to be inquisitive, who always says we should go to school. So I don't understand why she's using that religion to judge me. Because when I first left Nigeria, my mom wasn't like that. I don't know what happened. But in between, she was a Methodist. She was going to Methodist church, but she got influenced and indoctrinated into the Americanized style of Christianity. And this was where it was beginning to conflict with her faith. But she accepted me. If my mom, I've always said to people that if my born again mother can accept me, then there is no Nigeria because my mom is very stubborn. And for her to even accept me, I'm like, there is no Nigerian that cannot change if they're exposed to the right education and right information. So yeah, so she eventually accepted me, put me in her will. She, in fact, she willed everything into my name, Sahara. And she's very supportive. Everything I'm doing in life, I discuss it with her first. Even when I went for Super Serena in 2014, she was very supportive. She was there. So it's, it's so they can come around, people can change. And I believe that as a Christian, you can love everyone on condition. You can love like Jesus. Christian, what does he mean? Christ-like. Mm -hmm. You can be like Jesus by loving unconditionally and not judging people. So a do lot you, of people can be like that. Mm. Do you have any brothers? I have a younger sister. A brother, do you have any brothers, no? Uh, maybe step step ones from my okay. you know. But, okay. but my yeah. mom, just the two of us, yeah. Okay. Mm. Thank you for that, Miss Sarah. Yes, yeah. obviously, it's always a delight to speak to you. But my question are going to be in two components, and I want you to make it really personal. Mm -hmm. So, could you just, and I want you to give me a specific example of a personal experience or experiences from your friends within maybe the LGBTQ community who may want to pursue the Christian faith but gave up because of discrimination that they face? Have you, have, have you got any ex personal experience that you can share with us? I'm one of those people who gave up because of um, of the discrimination and the rejection. I left, and also, but mainly, I left because I educated myself on on what is going on and why it's based on politics. Um, there are lots of people like me, lots of Nigerians actually, LGBT Nigerians in the UK here and in the diaspora, who just don't practice the religion, both Christianity and Islam, or the Abrahamic religions anymore, because you just feel tired of the discrimination and having this completed because it messes with your mental health. When you're constantly worrying about not doing things based on a rule book that was written over 2000 years ago, you know, it's like the, what is in that book was prepared for the people of that time, not now. Because if it's now, I believe Jesus would do it differently. So if, in fact, it wasn't even Jesus that wrote it. It's men, Arab men in the desert that wrote this, that wrote that book and wrote those rules. And if you notice everything in the Bible is very patriarchal and very male chauvinistic, in my opinion. If you're going to follow the Bible so literally, then hello, you shouldn't be eating certain type of food and mixing your fabric and playing football and allow slavery and also allow pedophilia. There are so many things in the Bible that are very contradict contradictory to the rules that we have in the world today. And this is, for me, I, I find it very, um, I don't know why people insist that we have to be in a religion to live a full moral life. Because as far as I'm concerned, I've been out of the religion since I left Nigeria. Well, when I left Nigeria, a few years after when I left Nigeria, and I'm a good person. I don't believe I'm a bad person. I don't make bad choices. I make sure that when I'm making a decision, I am very careful. Even chimpanzees, animals, chimpanzees, monkeys and chimpanzees have, they get angry when uh, somebody, when one of them starts accumulating lots of food or bananas and not giving to other people. They will start attacking that person because they know that it's wrong to, to be a glutton and taking all the, all the and be greedy and taking everything for yourself and not sharing with the community. So I'm sorry, even the animal kingdom has morality. Talk less of we humans who are beyond and very well that we've evolved so well. So morality does not believe, I don't believe that morality, you have to, you need a religion to be moral. You can be a good person without religion. So if anybody decide not to follow the religion, by all means, be yourself. So far you're happy and not hurting anyone and not committing crime, by all means, be yourself. And that is what I wish all, most Christians would believe because they believe that if you don't believe in the religion, it's a crime. And it means that I cannot associate with you because you don't believe in the religion. If that shouldn't be the case. Because if you love someone, loving is unconditional. When you put condition, that's why I said to my mom, I said, if you love me, you will love me unconditionally. 
you won't love me telling me you have to be this, you have to be that, you have to believe this. Because she kept saying, pray to Jesus, ask Jesus to guide you, read the Bible, read scriptures. They keep sending Bible verses. And I told him to stop. I've told you I don't believe in this rubbish anymore. Stop it. Because stop. You know, when I said that, she was very angry with me and telling me how she carried me in her womb for nine months. How dare me? She was very upset. But you know, that is Nigerian yeah. parents for you. Mm. Miss, uh, uh, let's just let's put this into context. Mm. What Celia and I like to do on mm. on, on, our, on this show is that we like to sort of put a better context to things. People see things from a different perspective. So, and we're trying to make people better. So, if, I know you're very familiar with the Bible. You're aware of the Great Commission, and this is in Matthew 28, yeah. 16 to twenty, where it talks about making disciples of all men. Okay. So my question is. I'm a Christian and Celia is, and we're very active in our religion, mm -hmm. imbibed in our religion. It's, it's part, of, part of our values. As Christians, we can't choose, or we're supposed to be the ones to pick who God wants in the kingdom. So how then are we going to fulfill this great commission that has been given to us in bringing more people like yourself, who was part of the religion? How, how best can we make this, make you, make it more inclusive? I mean, that, that's where I'm going with this, because obviously this seems that there's some aspect of the religion that kind of alienates you. Mm. And with the lack of better word, people within the LBGTQ community. Mm. So we've been, my, I use myself and Celia as, as a case in point. We have been tasked to get people into the kingdom. So yeah. how best as Christians do we make this better? Well, I think it should be based on choice. You can't force people to follow you. That's not necessarily about forcing you, but yes. you were a Christian, right? Yes, mm -hmm. I was, okay. yes. And it was some elements within the church that makes you think, well, actually, it's not supporting for who I am and what I stand for. So that was, and please stop me here if I'm wrong, was that what made you being a Christian? I, that is not the main reason. I think I had my, like I said before, it encouraged me to go, father to do my research okay. and he encouraged me it was what I needed it was like an impetus okay. that pushed me a bit forward to do my research into religion and to see the contradiction in religion and to see the history of religion they see the history of how we came into existence the history of how our solar system came into existence if you watch the planets on BBC for goodness sake, people need to watch it because if you watch the planets, um, I love documentary, especially when it comes to the space, we're sending mass rover, mass ro um, rovers to the mass, mass planet. We're checking out different planets, even up to as far as Neptune and Saturn, we're checking planets and then we're still believing in 2000 year old archaic okay, book. That for me, that's just my, my own belief system. I, I don't want to force it on other people, but I'm saying, that you can still believe in it, but educate yourself on the subject. For me, you, what you just said, I, I love what you said, but what I would say is that it, it's too big for you because I think you're too, hmm, please don't, I'm not trying to disrespect you, but you're just a tiny, tiny element to a big, massive, mm, mega issue that we have in the world today. So for example, there is nothing you can do because even if you try and include LGBT people in your circle or even in your small church of let's say 2,000 or 3,000 people, we have billions of people on, the, on earth and there are billions of people who believe in different or, or all sorts of religion that uh, reject LGBT people. So it's going to be very difficult, like, even, except that maybe the Pope comes out and says, oh, you know what? start accepting LGBT people. Even that will never happen because it's very patriarchal, which is just impossible because they see it as a sin. And the only sin that they always look down upon, they don't look at the other sins that are in the Bible. But anyway, how do you do that? Let me give you an example. Salvation Army, rejecting trans and LGBT people when they need help. Salvation Army that is supposed to be inclusive and helpful of people who are vulnerable rejecting vulnerable LGBT people when we go to them and asking for help. Really? Yes, go to the news, go to, into the news and see, even if you Google it, Salvation Army against LGBT, you see a lot of it, not just Salvation Army, there are lots of homeless shelters that are religious based, that are rejecting people. When Trump was in power, he encouraged the religious people to reject LGBT people. This is what I was saying, the Trumpian style of evangelism 
has really tainted the progress that would have been made a long time ago. We've, be, we've been pushed back 50 years with that kind of policies and laws, because when it happens in America, it will happen in the rest of the world. Whatever America does, the rest of the world follows. They lead by example. And unfortunately, we live in a society where these organizations that are supposed to be inclusive of LGBT, especially when we come to you asking for help, you said, oh, I cannot include trans women in female sh shelters. Oh, we cannot include it because you are immoral and you're sick, you're going to molest children, you know? So it's difficult. This is why I'm saying that your view, as much as you're trying to be inclusive and be kind to the LGBT people, there are bigger machines, political machines behind that will never let that ever to happen. So unfortunately, there is not much you can do other than to love your LGBT friends and invite them to your cookouts and mm -hmm. um, in your church, if your church is very inclusive, invite LGBT people, they love it. LGBT people love it. We're always celebrating when true, I, there is a section in Trans Valley where I run, where we put true Christian, where we celebrate true Christians because true Christians love unconditionally. There's a church in America that always posts about trans inclusion and LGBT inclusion because there are churches out there that are inclusive of same-sex marriages and LGBT people. And it warms my heart when I say it. I will go to those church, but I don't have to believe in it. I, if I'm invited, I'll go, but I don't have to believe in it. I don't have to push myself and say, oh, you need to do this, follow these rules or laws for you to exist as a human being or be morally right. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Hara, I'm just gonna ask. Hmm. Now, one can argue or one can wonder and say, okay, so she was a very, you know, she was a good Christian. She grew up in a Christian, you know, she went to church, she enjoyed it, she loved it. So if I can, if I may ask, did you, did, do you feel you had a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with God? Because people say salvation is personal. So would you say you had a personal relationship with God? Yes, I did. You did. Yes, I okay. did. Like all of you, I did. I was, I had my, I had my lane of hands. You know, when you, they call you out to the front to mm -hmm. if you've not be born again, come forward. They did that for me, lane of hands. I was very spiritual and I was very, um, I felt it. I was speaking in tongues. I was in the choir. I was very much embedded in, in religion, but that was the Americanized style of Christianity. Okay. So, so so wouldn't that have made you feel that you have a personal relationship with God? You can go to him. He's your father, regardless of what anybody else says, regardless of what religion, because sometimes religion can be political as well. OK, because sometimes, you know, pastors can do some things or say some things to control their congregation. But given that you had that personal relationship with God, and I believe that you must have felt that if I need something, if I want something to happen in my life, I don't need to go and meet a pastor to pray for me. I can go directly to God because he's my father. So wouldn't, couldn't you have harnessed that relationship, that personal relationship you had with God and remained in your faith? regardless of what the church or what the Bible says, because you know that Bible also says, judge not for ye shall be judged, love thy neighbor as thyself, and God created you. And also you know that from what you might have been taught from being a Christian, that God does not do something that is not correct. Because people would say, oh no, this LGBTQ people, it was a mistake that God made. Mm -hmm. But no, because we know that our God does not make mistakes, right? So couldn't you have harnessed it a bit and, and felt, you know what, well, I don't care what you guys say, I have that personal relationship with God and I'm gonna hold on to that. That would have been my views before I know what I know now. Mm -hmm. uh, if I didn't um, educate myself on what religion was, I would have believed, I, would, I, I had, held that same views that exactly what you just said I believe in all mm -hmm. those things that God is infinite and he is is a he and um I worshipped him I read my bibles and I spoke in tongues and sang my songs and believed in it but I can assure you that I was a fraud because I was believing in something that now when I look back at it yes it was it gave me solace but it made me unhappy at the same time, and I was I wasn't myself, and I felt like I when I look back, I felt sorry for myself because 
I felt because I wasn't educated on the subject enough. It was based on what I, w- I was taught, uh, so what I was uh, what I was uh, taught in Nigeria. Because we are told not to question God, and we're told not to question religion. And when I was there, there was no we didn't for you to go to the internet. You have to go to the internet cafe. We didn't have internet at home. We didn't have it on our mobile phones. It wasn't that easily accessible. So I wasn't very well exposed to how religion came into existence and how how everything came out it came into nigeria through colonialism and to all the other stuff i never knew any of these things so yes while i was young it was great but it was also very conflicting for me remember i tried to commit suicide twice so why did i try to commit suicide twice if i if god was so good to me why why was i so conflicted about my gender why didn't god give give back to me as a female you know, if, if God is so powerful and all, so uh, it doesn't do wrong, why did he make me wrong? Because society says I was wrong. You know, so it, it did mess me up mentally. And I think letting go was one of the best, thing, best things I've ever done. And I believe that if God was so perfect, like you just described, and I believed, like exactly like you just described as well, why do we have kids dying of cancer? Why do we have natural disasters killing, they said about 9 million children die in a year, to innocent children? Why are they dying? It's like, you see good people dying constantly. I keep saying there are lots of good people who have done amazing things, dying so young. And people who haven't done anything, but, but bad people live long, right? People say, oh, God is testing your faith. Oh, really? Because we have explanation. We as human beings, we always have an explanation to justify things that we cannot explain. When we, when the science find a vaccination for COVID, we thank God, we think it's God that gave them the strength to find, to find the vaccination for COVID. When I'm treated for either one of my diseases because I have multiple of them, <laughs> when it comes to my stomach or my skin or whatever, I go like, oh, we all time give the credit to God or constantly. Why do we do that? Why don't we give credit to science and give credit to technology and also give credit where it's due? But we give it, to God. That is the easy way out, in my opinion, because for me, I like to see proof. I don't describe, I don't even describe myself as an atheist. I believe that, I just believe that I believe in science and I believe in technology and I believe in history. I believe that there are facts there that we're not exposed to, especially when it comes to the black community. We are afraid to ask questions and we are afraid to go and do research because we are afraid of the truth. And that is the problem. I would say it's courageous. In fact, any black person who goes out there to do the research and still comes back and says, oh, you know what? I've done the research. I totally agree, I know it, but I still believe there is a God out there. That person I'll respect, I'll say, yeah, sure. Do your thing because you're already, you're aware. You're very well educated on the subject, but you still want to believe in it because it makes you feel better. Great for you. But for me, it won't work because you know I'm, I'm too far on the foregone conclusion. I've gone too mm-hmm. far. In the sense that I've already done, I've, I know that we, the earth is just a tiny speck when it comes to the creation of life and the creation of our atmosphere and where we come from when it comes to the planet and all of that. I, I pray to God that our black community will be more interested in doing their research when it comes to science and technology. Instead can of I, just believing in blind I, faith, can I there's jump no in? point. Can mm. I jump in for two seconds? Yes say something I, I pray to god and yes. as a woman of science i'm surprised that you're still mentioning god so in your course of research are you trying to tell me that you haven't seen anything good about religion no 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 no, no, no. don't get me wrong i'm not saying that there's anything bad about okay so there are lots of things that are bad about religion don't get me wrong but i'm not saying that religion doesn't go do good you do it does a lot of good there are lots of christian uh, Christian charities that are out there helping people. I'm just talking based on my experience and my community and how they've dealt with my community. They've handled it really badly, in my opinion. I think that history will look upon them really badly. They should have been a bit more inclusive of all humans, regardless, even attacking Muslims. Look at in Nigeria, for example, Christians and Muslims all at each other, thanks to Wahhabism and radical form of evangelism, attacking each other. It's just ridiculous. Like. We are all humans. We're all Nigerians, for goodness sake. We have the same blood running in our veins. Why do we keep on fighting each other just because, oh, my faith is this, my faith is this? Politics. Religion is politics. But when it comes to spirituality and faith, 
that is in a, on a different level. If you're spiritual and you use your faith for good, for example, then that is amazing. But why do you have to do good based on faith and morality and based on what the Bible tells you or Quran tells you or what the uh, uh, religion tells you to do? Why do you have to follow that rules? Is it because you're afraid of going to hell? I have a problem when people begin, I have a problem with it, with religion, when people start saying that, oh, I need a faith and I need a religion for me to do good because religion tells me to go and help the poor. I'm going to help the poor because religion tells me to go and do this, do that, then I'll do that. Then I'm like, hello. So you are a bad person then because you need a religion to tell you to go and do that because mor morally, as a human being, we should, we're, we're already embedded with um, a kind heart and a bad heart. And then you choose the kind you heart to just to be a good person. In a situation where you decide that, oh, no, 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 I'll wait until I do this because I don't want to go to hellfire. It means you're looking for a reward for your good deeds. It means you're waiting for, you're, you're afraid of God. You're, it's like your God is <laughs> making you afraid and saying you're going to threaten me, that you're going to put you in hell if you don't do good. It's like being in primary school and they tell you, do good or I'll punish you. Mm. You know, it's just, it doesn't sound, for me, it doesn't sit well for me. I believe that as a human being, we should willingly want him to do good, to do good. without religion or having faith, in my opinion. Okay, I'm just going to go back quickly to, to what I was saying earlier, where I explained, you know, couldn't you have formed that personal relationship with God? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go to the book of Acts, chapter, chapter 10, verse 1 to 23. But I'm going to read from verse 15. He says, um, the, the verse talks about the Holy Spirit telling Peter in his dream that nothing God makes is unclean. OK, and therefore, as humans, we shouldn't be judging people and saying, OK, this person is not right. This person, God will not want this person in his kingdom. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to see if you can just th think with me for a minute and just look at it from this way. God says he will never make anything unclean. So really and truly, God created people, different sex, people, same sex, whatever it is, God created everyone. So do you not believe that since God has already made, since God has already said he doesn't do anything unclean, so which means he made you the way you are and you are perfect the way you are? I think that that verse, I don't know if it refers to, I think it refers to, well. I think Peter didn't want to eat something because he was yeah, saying it was saying. unclean. It yeah. Food. yeah, that's yeah, the food. point I wanted to make to you that it refers to, to food mostly. Um, uh, but for me, I think that, it's very contradictory because then you go to Leviticus and Leviticus is saying, you know, start talking about rules of the Bible and how you shouldn't sleep with a man, should not sleep with a man, or lay with a, a man the way they lay, lay with boys the way they lay with their wives. So and that's in the Old Testament, Leviticus. Old Testament, even in, yeah. Christi even in, in, in the New Testament as well, there are sections in the New Testament that also criticizes uh, uh, same-sex marriage or not marriage, not marriage in particular, but relationships. Same yeah, same-sex unions or when sexual unions. Um, it's this is why I'm, the Bible, the book of the Bible and the books in the Bible are very contradictory. And this is why I'm saying that if we're going to follow the Bible so literally, then there are so many things that we shouldn't be doing. For example, like what you just what you just said now, he's, he 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 got it in his dreams doesn't make it absolute and because he said God in his dream doesn't mean that oh yeah everybody yes because he says so it means that it's real I'm sorry you could hallucinate anything I was lying in bed last night and I dreamt that I won the lottery and I was buying mansions and I was driving my Ferrari Portofino it doesn't mean that it's real mm -hmm. so I hope you played your lottery though uh, I have to play actually I forgot I was supposed sure. to play yes yeah, so so um so it's 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 difficult for me because I think when, when it comes to that, I, I would say that uh, each to their own, anybody that wants to believe in it, good for them. They can believe in it as much as they like, but saying that it's, if nothing is unclean and all of that, it's, I think it's more in relation to food. I think where I'm trying to go with that, Miss Sahara, is it really pains me to see that people like yourselves, right? Who I loved the description you gave in your early childhood growing up in Nigeria and how you loved the church, it was a part of you. And unfortunately, because of the discrimination you were facing, a place that was supposed to be your safe haven was not. 
okay it really pains me and because of that in a way you kind of moved away from the christian religion and i don't i don't want other people in the lgbt community who have who want to have a relationship with god who want to love God regardless of what people think about them. I don't want them to have to move away from God because of what other people in their immediate community, in their immediate Christian community, the way they see them or the way they will talk about them because of who they are. I would, I would like a world where everybody just loves one another. I know this is very, it's gonna be a, a, a dream come true, but mm. it, I would love a world where Everybody loves each other, regardless of your sex. We're not God, okay? If, let's just, let's obey the first commandment, which says love your neighbor as yourself, period, okay? And let's go with that. And if anybody is doing something that you think, okay, no, I don't agree with this, but regardless, love that person anyway. And don't be the judge of that person. So, you know? why, so do you, would... why do you want to stop them from exploring uh not staying away not hating the religion for example i don't hate christianity and i still love my christian music i still listen to christian music so what is wrong with not wanting to follow the doctrine because the religion now is politics no there's so, nothing yeah. wrong with that but what i'm saying is i don't want it to be because people discriminated against them that they left let it be because they found it themselves and thought okay this should not be this is not a religion that i want to follow and so yeah. for that reason i've done my research and I no longer want to follow the religion. I'm going to move on to another religion or to something else. But well, I don't want it to be because, no, because the Christian faith was discriminatory towards, towards me. So for that reason, I'm going to move from the religion. So I don't want it to be a forced, you know, imposed on them to move just because they weren't accepted. Yeah. And I think as Christians, we need to do better. We definitely need to do better. And that was why we thought we'd bring you in today to, to trash this topic. Because yeah. there are a lot of Christians out there that still think, okay, no, we don't, no, we can't invite you to our church. We don't want to have anything to do with you. We need to start putting people in, you know, putting ourselves in people's shoes mm -hmm. and treat people the way we would want to be treated. Yep. Okay. I agree. Because, I agree. Because you mentioned something earlier and you said, if God was here now, would he, what do you think he might do? Because if we, the, the last, um, topic you did with us there was a video we put in front of that top um, that topic where this um trans lady was being lynched i think this was during the um, black lives matter protest yes she was being lynched by a mob of black people now we keep talking about equality equality but it's only it, it, it's as though okay yes we want to be equal in this but not with this okay we're saying we want equal equality, equality. Yeah, we're saying we want equal rights or so black, white, we all want to be equal. But when it comes to the LGBT community, there is a discrimination. And I think in the last video you also did, you also said how within the LGBT community itself, there's it's also divide. discrimination, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You know, so we all, I don't know, I, as you said, this is a big issue and it's not me and Yuri or, you know, we're hoping that people will watch this video and they will change their mindset. We're not saying, oh, you need to, you know, Panderosa with someone from the LGBT community, but give them that respect. Do not hate them. Do not despise them. You know, that is the message that we're trying to, to drive across here. And I'm just going to go back to the part where you said you were, you were molested. I know you said you didn't want to go into it, but mm. look at the hypocrisy in that though. Do you understand? Because you go to the church, you dress the way you want to dress to express how you feel. Mm. And yet people molested you. And these are people that are supposed to be Christians. Yep. That outwardly they will preach against homosexuality mm -hmm. or LGBT and things like that. But behind closed doors, they're doing something completely different. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is humanity for you. Whether even in Christian religion or not, people do it. We are all hypocrites. And, uh, we say something and then do the other. Yeah. Can I just take you back a bit? Some Christians could argue, what do you care? Our religion is not accepting of you. Mm -hmm. What do you care? You don't believe in the religion. Mm -hmm. So what do you care? I really don't care because, uh, but the problem is when it comes to politics, because they make rules that affect people like me. They make rules mm -hmm. that affect LGBT. Look at what is going on in Ghana at the moment. Oh. You know, um, you know, they're raiding a new LGBT center, which is a refuge for LGBT people who are homeless and fighting for their rights, which was just open uh, in the end of January, yeah. mm -hmm. they're being attacked. 
And, and it, they're so-called Christians and pastors and church leaders were on there persecuting LGBT people. And this is what I'm saying that it's all about politics and we are badly, black people are badly influenced, especially continental Africa are badly influenced by Trumpism style of Christianity. I remember the old style of Christianity it wasn't like that. We didn't even hear that, oh, there is LGBT. Nobody talks about it in those days because everybody mind their business. When you love someone, you love someone unconditionally. But now they keep hating each other and attacking each other. But Wahhabism in the North and then in the South, we have uh, American style of Christianity, which has badly brainwashed our people to hate people like that. So, uh, so back to what you were saying, uh, unfortunately, is the decisions that are being made has now gone political and it's affecting people politically. If the police did not raid, police raiding an LGBT center, Ghana that is known for their uh, liberalism and inclusion for a while, because I always say to people that Ghana is so way, way ahead of Nigeria when it comes to inclusion, now has become more like Nigeria, thanks to sponsorship from right-wing uh, Christian organizations in America. And they influence the laws that are passed in different countries. They were the ones that influenced the law that was passed in 2012. 14 years imprisonment for LGBT people or anyone that associates with them or creates any association in the country. And that wasn't the issue. That wasn't like that before. Why did they pass that law? For what exactly? There are hungry Nigerians on the street. There are homeless Nigerians on the street. Go to Lagos and see people on the, living on the water and all of that. They don't have a, a place to lay their heads. They haven't got food to eat. People on the street begging, go to my Instagram page We've turned begging into a profession. It's a job. It's a Nine job. It's five. a full-time job. Yeah. But Nigeria is one of the most religious countries in the world. Country in the world. So how come we have so much crime and so much begging and so much depravity in the country that claims to be religious and put God first? This is the hypocrisy that I was talking about and I'm bringing it back because yeah. we talk about something and we do the other. The same politicians who go to take their loot, go and sponsor the church to build mansions and build mega churches. Mm. But there are people on the streets suffering. The same politician will go and buy a private jet for a pastor to bless their loot. The pastor will go there and bless their loot and mm. say it's God that gave it to them. This is the point I was trying to make. Things like this will not encourage the young to come back into the church because they are more enlightened now, thanks to social media. I was watching a video the other day and it was so disgusting. As like, I think I posted it in early um, last year. All these Americanized evangelical celebrity pastors that have like private jets and living in mansions and trying to justify the fact that they are, oh, I am, uh, God's, God made, said I should have five private jets because I'm doing his work to make really? things easy for me. Yes. It's very lame. It's very lame. Jesus was a carpenter. If you yeah. know the story of Jesus, if you believe in the story of Jesus so literally, he was a carpenter with the sandals, yeah. walking barefooted. And Jesus camel was, if he was lucky. Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus did not go to the temple and was throwing people out because of the yes. way they were going. Yeah, well, he's behaving. He kicked them out. He turned my father's you house see, into nonsense. You see, that's the thing. That's the thing, though, Miss Sahara, because people, and this is where I say, I agree with you when you say Christ, religion has been poly, politicized or whatever it is, you know, and these are the kind of aspects that we're looking at, okay? And unfortunately, it, for me, it boils down to knowing God for yourself, it, you know, it goes down to knowing God for yourself and not, you're, you're so far off the backside of the pastor that you can't, you, you, you're forgotten what the Bible says. You're calling and you them don't daddies have... and mommy. This one is a new one. That, oh, daddy. They call their pastors mommy and daddy. And I'm like, excuse me, my mom, he's, you're older than him. Why are you calling him mommy and daddy? Oh, that's how we call them. I'm like, excuse me. You need to stop this psychophancy because it's so very Nigerian. And I agree with you. I believe that your faith should be between you and your God, not yes. the religion, not the not religion. religion. And I, 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 this is why I was saying the earliest Christians were Gnostic. They were very, it was between them, they were spiritual and they were very much, it was between them. And they believe that there is a being up there that gave them who they are. Mm -hmm. And they believe, also believe that <clears throat> there is a, a God up there that does things. And then there is a demigod and there is the demigod who is 
the one who does all the evils and the bad things that we have in the world. But the truth is, why do you worry about the external stuff when it comes to bringing what this person is doing? Mind yourself and your God. Why do you even need to worry about bringing lamb? Because when they go out, lost lamb, you're bringing them back into the shepherd. There is no need for that. Just believe in your God. So far you believe in it, great. Once you start doing that, you start conflicting with someone else's views. For example, why I live my life has nothing to do with other people. I don't need to, I don't want to influence people. I will give you my, my, my belief. If you ask me questions, I will tell you what I believe in, but I'm not gonna force it on you. I'm gonna encourage you to do it. But unfortunately, you cannot practice Abrahamic religion without judging and encouraging people to join you. There is difficult to do that because the Bible encourages you to do that. The, the Bible encourages you, if you want to be a good person, you need to go out there and get the flocks back. You need to go out there and change lives. You need to not change lives like that. Change lives in the sense that mm -hmm. make them repent and follow God. Because that's the, that is the doctrination. So yeah, that is politics. The religion has turned into politics. And they selected only the books in the Bible. If you notice, there are other books during the canon, the canon convention, the yeah. canonization. Mm -hmm. They only selected the books that, that is only... Um, only uh, uh, good for them at that era when it comes to politics. And he raised women, by the way. So why do I want to be in a religion that would do that to me, that would discourage? Because I'm all for feminism and I'm all for inclusion of all humans. We should all be treated as equal. But in a situation where we live in a society that is unequal and treats women below the dirt on their, in their feet. And then when I'm even trans, I'm even more below the totem pole. I'm like, come on, I, an intelligent person will go like, come on, I don't need to believe in this. I need to just live my life quietly and do my own thing. I think my, my final question to hmm. you is kind of split in two ways. You, you do agree that there's some members of, of the LGBT community that wants to be desperately accepted by the church. Yes. And in so saying, Jesus is sort of an advocate for the um, the underdog. Yeah. So people like Mary Magdalene, the tax mm. collectors, you know, people that would, the world would generally call sinners. Yeah. Jesus went after them, which follows what you're saying, bring people back into the flock. Yeah. So giving up accommodating and loving Jesus was, and if he was here today, what kind of reception do you think he would give, will be given to people from the LGBT community that desperately want to be accepted in the church. We've got people that are within the community that work actively in the church. That, that are pastors and who are priests. still even active in the church because yes, they, so, go to, they go to inclusive churches. Yes, so the church, their faith is part of them, their values, their so-called, it allows them even navigate through life and the challenges that come with being either a trans woman, uh, uh, members of the LGBT, their faith is what makes them go through things. So how do you think um, Jesus would have received them. I, I well, I'm not, <laughs> I don't, well, you know, the, the, the existence of Jesus is another, that one is another problematic subject. But as far as I'm concerned, based on what I've seen in the Bible and what I believed in when I was growing up as a child, I believed that Jesus would be inclusive because he's an inclusive person. He always preached when it was his era, well, based on what was on there, he was very much inclusive of everyone. And he was preaching love. And even when he was being, uh, called names and harassed and and you know he was very much he was very much fighting for the underdog as he said so i don't think people people quite understand like many people there was a saying that someone was saying that i was watching a political because i watch a lot of political slots and i was watching one where the person was like if jesus were to be here today he would be very angry with uh, republicans and the way the right wing right-wing Christ, so-called Christians are at the moment. When you see pastors preaching uh, against Barack Obama doing good things and against LGBT, calling LGBT people demons and hating Muslims and all of that, I'm like, Jesus was the most inclusive person in the Bible. I'm sorry, if he was alive today or he was here, that is if, if you believe that he existed, I believe that he would be very much inclu inclu inclusive of everyone. He won't judge. Because even the Bible says thou shalt not judge. Yeah, yeah. So why would he want to come and sit down there and start judging people? He won't do that. He'll be, yeah. He will suit your pain and help you and encourage you to come in and bring you in and encourage you to be with him. Yeah. So that is, that is what I think would have happened. 
But as what I know now, I am in doubt of the existence of the story of Jesus Christ. That was why I asked you guys to watch that video that I sent to yeah. you. Um, because the story is too synonymous to stories in India, Greek, and ancient Egypt, 3,000 years or 4,000 years, 3,000 years before Jesus even existed. So, and paganism, things like being born on the 25th of, 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 of December, as much as many people now have, it has been discredited, I wasn't born then. But we as a human being, we follow a lot of pagan tradition, even the 12 months of the year as well. Things like this needs to be more explored and you need to ask more questions about it. Yes, if you still, after exploring and you say you still want to believe in Jesus Christ, go for it, believe in it. But don't take it too literal and say that, okay, my life right now, I can't miss fabric. And my life right now, I can't do this, I can't do that. Oh, because the Bible says it's okay to sleep with young, young girls. I'm going to sleep with underage girls. Oh, because the Bible says I should hate LGBT people, I should hate them. No, it's this, ridiculous. This is another territory that you're going into because this, I mean, that is that is another topic on okay. its own. Which because you yeah, because we did watch the video and honestly, yeah. yeah, that is another topic on its own. But the thing is, what we would like, and I mean, what we would like to take away from today's topic is just to create awareness. Mm. Create awareness. People should be more accepting. Don't do God's work for him. Just, just obey and love right? Yes. Just obey yes. and love your neighbor um, as yourself. Treat others the way you would want to be treated. Exactly. You know, turn the tables around. If you were part of the LGBT community, how would you want to be treated? Mm -hmm. If your child suddenly comes out today and say, this is who I am, how would you want other people to treat your child? Would you like it to be your child that was being lynched in the video that we, you know, so we, 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 we mustn't forget First of all, we're humans, yes. okay? First of all, we're humans, regardless of what, whoever people like sleeping with or whoever they are, whatever, first of all, we're humans. And as humans, we should be able to do the most basic thing, which is to love mm. each other and not judge each other, okay? Yeah. And treat each other the way we want to be treated. So I hope that if you watch this video from the beginning to the end, and you were part of those people that would say no, as Mr. Hara said, oh, LGBTQ community people are going to the London. hottest part of hell. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't do God's work for him because yes. by so doing, you might even be committing a sin, okay? By yeah. so doing, by judging and by condemning people, you might also be doing yourself a disservice, okay? Yes. So I hope that we can all learn to love each other. And Mr. Hara, it's great having you back on our show. We're gonna Thank have you, so you back <laughs> again, and I think this has been a very, you know, it's been a very educative um, discussion. Yeah. Okay, and again, Yuri, thanks for being a, a wonderful co-host. And Thank I mean, to so those of you who do not know, we are Trash It is going on Pop Central TV in Nigeria, and this is on the DSTV satellite channel, channel mm -hmm. one eight nine from the thirteenth of March. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Now, this might already have started or you might be hearing it for the first time, but don't forget, it's from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, channel 189, Pop Central, DSTV, Satellite um, TV in Nigeria. So make I'm sure standing. you tune in because this topic is going to be premiering there at some point. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's been, um, it's been, on, you know, it's been lovely having you, Miss Sahara. Thank, you, thank so you, much. you so much. Miss Sahara, it's always a pleasure to have you. Absolutely. And you know, I've got mad love. <laughs> Yes, Thank you so much for having me. I, I had fun. I always have fun talking to you ladies. So. You do. Yes. You do. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.